Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Dr. Yvonne Kaysan, President of Spiritual Awakenings International. Welcome to our Spiritual Awakenings International Conference 2022. I'd like to introduce Dr. Brian Sackett, who is a board member of Spiritual Awakenings International, who will be introducing our first speaker for the morning. Thank you, Yvonne. And uh, thank you all for attending. Welcome to our conference. Uh, Spiritual Awakenings International would like to welcome Reverend Peter Panagor. Peter is a best-selling author. He's a two-time near-death experiencer. Uh, he's had multiple out-of-body experiences and other mystical experiences. He served as a community minister in New England for nearly 20 years. And he's currently teaching mysticism, centering prayer, and Kriya Yoga on his YouTube panel. Let's all welcome Reverend Peter Pentagor. Thank you, Brian. Peace, everybody. Uh, this is the Centering Prayer, an introduction to the cultivation of interior silence and the end of the false self. If you die before you die, then when you die, you will not die. Writing on the door jam at St. Paul's Monastery on Mount Athos in Greece. A little historical description for you. Developed in the 1960s and 70s at the Trappist St. Joseph's Abbey in Massachusetts, its centering prayer is rooted in the cloud of unknowing, Meister Eckhart, Teresa of Avila, and Father Thomas Merton, friend of Thich Nhat Hanh and practitioner of Zazen. Among other Christian mystics, also includes the work of Jack Cornfield, who may be familiar to you, from the Thera Theraveda Buddhist Center, the Insight Meditation Society, also in Massachusetts. I began my practice in 1977 during my senior year, three years before my first near-death experience. My Catholic prep school was located near the monastery, and they were an influence. One of the developers, Father Thomas Keating, wrote, the method consists in letting go of every kind of thought during prayer, even the most devout thoughts. That is a troubling spot for a lot of people. Although the practice uses sacred word, centering prayer is not solely an exercise in concentrating or focusing one's attention on something such as a mantra and the breath, but is also more concerned with the intention of the heart and the consent of the mind. It is heartful meditation with the side effect of mindful meditation, aimed at the union with the oneness of being who I encountered when I was dead and during various mystically transformative, spiritually transformative experiences, including a Kundalini awakening. Neuroscientist Andrew B. Newberg, professor of the Department of Integrative Medicine and Nutritional Sciences and the director of the research at Marcus Institute Integrative Health at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. He says, he explained that in his study, that the brains of the nuns he examined who engaged in centering prayer, that the nuns' brains scans showed similarity, similarities to the people who use psilocybin mushrooms. And both experiences tend to result in a very permanent change in the way the brain works. Centering prayer practice rewires the brain and trains one into the silence of the interior self. It is the quieting of the mind, using the mind against itself. Its aim is silence, and in the silence is where the divine is encountered. This is very simple. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, relax. Be quiet in yourself. Aim your heart at the source of love. Choose a simple sacred word that best supports your sincere intention to be open to the divine presence and action in you. Maybe the word is peace. Maybe it's love. Maybe you have a chant that you use. Use your chant. I use one chant 
one chant because it burns itself into the subconscious of my mind and there runs as a tape loop inside me to be, to be called up at a moment's notice whenever I need it. And the purpose isn't the word or the prayer itself. Those things disappear. They are training for the mind. I match my prayer word with my breath, and I ride it up and down inside myself. My prayer word, I use the Jesus prayer as, an, as a nod to my orthodox upbringing as a child. But the word is less important than the intention of the heart. The word falls away. And let that word be held gently on your breath, not gripped, but ride on your breath like a dragonfly on your palm, not grasped, just settling. Make your intention to be sincerely in the beloved's presence within you. And whenever you become aware of anything, Thoughts, feelings, perceptions, images, imaginations, memories, movies, songs. Simply return to your sacred word, your mantra, your chant, your anchor. This is a very simple practice with lifelong consequences. It creates a space inside oneself that can be expanded with practice, peeled layer by layer, the ego disappears. The false self, I'm sorry, the false self disappears because the egoic mind still remains to a certain extent because you have to live in the world. But it helps the space inside oneself grow and empty in order for it to be filled with your true self, your higher self, your divine nature, your oneness of being. It makes the veil permeable. Layer by layer, as it's peeled away, as the false self is peeled away, the veil becomes thinner and it makes one more accessible to spiritually transformative experiences. It has in my life. I chose to practice this after, to continue in my practice after my near death experience because meditation works. Before we begin, We'll meditate for 20 minutes in silence, practicing this, following your breath. You may use your own meditation practice if you wish. But know this, in group meditation, the deeper you go inside yourself, the more radiance is shared among us all as a collective. The deeper you go inside yourself in a group, the deeper the meditation becomes for everyone. Jesus told the truth when he said, when two or three are gathered, I am there, that I am is the divine self, the universal consciousness, the Atman, the Brahma, whatever name you wish to give it. And when we are individually inside the space of our hearts, collectively, the radiance grows among us and an energy transference. So that's what I would like to tell you this morning. And I'm going to set my timer. And because I'm a regular practitioner under the lights, I grab my mask if I can find it. There it is. And I put my mask on to cover my eyes. So this is a silent meditation practice. I'll set my timer for 20 minutes. I'll see you in 20 minutes. When your mind wanders, come back to your practice.
Thank you, Peter, for sharing that deep and wonderful meditation and helping us set the tone for the conference. <laughs>